My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. Over the last couple of months, I've been testing out a butane stove from the company known as Four Winds. This is a Japanese company, and this is an interesting product. By the way, everyone, my name is Luke, and this is the Outdoor Gear Review. If you decide to purchase one of these stoves, this is what you're going to receive. You get the box. On the inside, you get an insanely large instruction manual. I mean, look at this, everyone. It's like you bought a TV or something. You receive this storage case. Single zipper, you have a zipper pull. And on the inside, you have the stove. And also some EVA foam. The foam holds the stove in place and prevents it from rattling when you're out hiking. That's a nice feature. It's a nice touch. This is the Four Winds Compact Camp Stove. And as you can see here, it features an interesting design. It's definitely a different style of stove. I haven't seen anything quite like this before. This runs on butane, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Let's talk about the features here. So up at the top, you have pot supports. And that's how you unfold them. Down at the bottom, you have legs. Let's see. It's a little confusing at times. This is where you connect the fuel. This is how you turn it on and make adjustments. And right here we have the igniter. Here we have some butane. Attaching the canister to the stove is very simple. You have a notch here on the stove and you also have a notch here on the canister. Match up the notches, push them together and twist. That locks it into place. While we're looking at the top of the stove here, you can see that we have the burner head. Here's the igniter. Around the head, we have somewhat of a windscreen, and the legs themselves act as a windscreen as well. There's also an additional lip around the burner head. That is a windscreen too. Before I touch upon the stats for this stove, let's go ahead and do a boil test. Two cups of water, let's see how long it takes. With this boil test, it took right at three minutes. It was done slightly before I hit the stop button. Anyways, now it's time to touch upon the stats concerning the stove. As I mentioned before, this runs on butane and the BTUs is 9,200. I've been able to clock roughly 100 minutes on one full can, eight ounces of butane. And of course that's going to be with like mixed use, some all out for boiling water, and then again at times having it toned down to simmer. Let's take a second here and let's talk about size. In the storage case, you're looking at 4.3 inches by 3.2 by 2.7. When the stove is set up, it stands five and a half inches and it's six and a half inches wide from the end of the pot support to the opposite side. The weight with the case is 11 and a half ounces. The weight without the case, nine and a half ounces. The primary material for this stove is stainless steel, but there is some aluminum, some plastic, and you have some EVA foam, along with the polyester case. And finally, my friends, the cost. The stove is running $80 on Amazon at the time of filming. Since last year, everyone, I've been testing out this stove, and these are the pros and cons that I have for it, starting with the pros. So first off, the overall quality of this stove is very good. There's nothing here that screams like a weak point to me. We're talking about very good materials, excellent build quality, no sharp edges on any of the metal. The stove has held up to all of my use and abuse over the months and it continues to perform very well. Next, when it comes to the operation of the stove, it's very simple. Not only to connect the fuel, but to run it. The adjuster is excellent, it's not too stiff. At the same time, it's not too loose. The igniter always works every single time, and you can easily control the power of the stove. You can max it out, or you can simmer. This stove can do it all. Next, my friends, when it comes to the pot supports, they're pretty good. They can support just about any size pot, cup, pan, including small cups such as this. In the end, this will support just about any size of cup, pot, or pan. And it does so in a very stable manner. The legs themselves fold out in a unique way, but it's in a way that offers a ton of support. Also, once you put the stove down, this isn't something that you can easily knock over. It's very stable. Next, everyone, we have to talk about price. Overall, the price isn't bad when you compare this to other butane stoves. Next, the included case is fantastic. This is one of the best cases that I've seen when it comes to a stove. I really like this. Not only does it protect your stove, but it tightly surrounds it so it doesn't make any noise inside of your backpack when you're hiking around. 
And lastly, my friends, as far as the pros go, the overall wind performance with this stove is very good. You have some protection that goes around the burner head, then you have protection at the burner head itself, and again, the legs act as a windscreen too. And with that, my friends, we now go over to the cons for this stove. First off, we have to talk about the pot supports. Let's say that we want to fold them down. We're going to package this up to store it. Check this out. That is the process you have to go through to put those legs up. Now let's say that we have to set up the stove so we can use it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The amount of fiddling that you have to do here to set this up and to break it down is ridiculous. Not only are the pot supports irritating to deal with, but so are the legs. They basically fold up and unfold the exact same way. So you can't go all the way over to do it. To break down the legs and to fold them up, this is what you have to do. Go down to the middle and stop there. Then go all the way with each leg. If you want to set them up, you have to do the same thing. Halfway, then all the way. Just like that. Setting up the pot support, setting up the legs is very fiddly. It takes time. And it's not natural. It's not what you want to do. What you want to do is take the leg and unfold it all the way, but that prevents the other leg from standing up. <laughs> That's why you can only do it about halfway and then go all the way with each leg. Without a doubt, everyone, setting up this stove and breaking it down is a pain. To be honest, I absolutely hate that aspect to this stove. Next up, everyone, while the overall performance of this stove is not bad, the burner head is rather small. And because it's so small, it will work best with small cups, small pots, and small pans. In other words, this isn't a great stove for cooking. It does a great job with boiling water, but because the burner head is so small, cooking up large meals in camp is not this stove's strong suit. If you're going to cook up a large meal, I would highly recommend that you have a pot or pan that has an inner core in it. That way it could distribute the heat more evenly. That type of pot or pan will give you the overall best cooking experience with a stove like this. Next everyone, when it comes to the size of this stove, this is quite large. For a backpacking stove, I mean, there's a lot going on here. This is a, a rather large stove, even though the burner head is rather small. The company likes to brag about the size and the weight of this stove on their website in their listings, but in general, it's somewhat heavy, it's rather large. I'm not really sure what they're talking about. The last con that I have deals with the parent company of Four Winds. They actually have their logo stamped here on the igniter. This company sells butane gas canisters, such as this, but they are crazy, crazy expensive, like rip-off prices. One can of fuel, $14, and that's on sale. That is a crazy high, ridiculous price, considering the fact just how inexpensive butane is. You can buy 12 cans, each one 8 ounces, for roughly $34 from other sellers. That makes a ton of sense. One can for $14, that's a ripoff, plain and simple. And that right there wraps up the pros and cons that I have for the camp stove, the compact camp stove. In the end, I do not like this stove. I do not recommend it. The overall performance is okay, it's not bad. It's a little bit big, it's a little heavy, all of that I can deal with. The igniter is fantastic. It does good in the wind. But outside of those pros, setting up the stove and breaking it down is irritating. The pot supports are highly irritating. <laughs> it's almost like a puzzle. Like, it's ridiculous. Folks, I do not like this stove, and that's my review. For $80, in my opinion, there's better ways to spend your money. When it comes to a camp stove, it falls into two categories, and it's with these two categories that make this stove just not make any sense. So let's say that you're backpacking. That type of camp stove is going to be very small. Those tend to be very inexpensive. You could find isobutane stoves for 10 
20 bucks, something like that. You can go with higher end brands and pay more, of course. The point is you can easily find a good isobutane stove for very little. The next type of camp stove is going to be a large stove for say like car camping. With stoves like that, they offer very good performance. They're very stable and it offers a solution for a very specific need. With a stove like this, it falls in the middle and it just doesn't make any sense, especially for the money. This is $80. Again, when it comes to that type of money, there's a lot of really good stoves out there that offer a better user experience than this stove here. Make sure to comment down below everyone, what do you all think about this camp stove? <laughs> That's my review. What's yours? Comment down below. Folks, I appreciate you all for joining me for this episode. Hit the thumbs up before you go, it helps the channel. If you want to support a channel that's agenda free, you could do so on Patreon and here on YouTube. You could join the Wolf Pack. Everyone, take care, be well, strength and honor. Bye for now. Oh, 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 o